If you're always looking to get the most performance out of every aspect of your game, then it's a good idea to learn about the job with code construction. So the job with code construction is a part of the system base class in Unity's entity component system. And basically using that, we can schedule off work to be performed on different worker threads. Now the key here is this is basically for places where we don't need to use any like component data from entities and we literally just have like a block of code that we want to run off on a worker thread. So today we're going to be going over the job with code construction. I'm going to be talking about what it is, when to use it, and then I'm going to be showing you how to use it in a little tutorial section of this video. All right, so let's talk job with code. So like I mentioned, job with code is part of the system base class. We can basically just create it um, just by saying job with code and then making something like this little lambda function that we have right here for any code that we want to you know schedule off onto a worker thread just by doing the dot schedule here now the key here is that we're using this when we don't necessarily need any component data and we're just maybe you know running some calculations or something like that that we can just you know want to push off onto a worker thread now if we want we don't have to schedule this onto a worker thread we still can run this on the main thread the main advantage of that is this does take advantage of the burst compiler. So if there is, you know, some bit of code that we need to, you know, again, do some calculations on that we might need the results from like pretty much immediately, we can run it on the main thread. And then that way we can still take advantage of the you know, performance gains of the burst compiler. So in this case, what I'm going to be doing is just going to be calculating a new trajectory every frame based off of a new angle. So basically I'm using a sine wave to make this angle go back and forth. And then once we have that angle calculated, Calculated, then I can actually calculate, you know, the points along this full trajectory. So now there's a couple things to keep in mind before we do this. You see that we don't actually pass any variables inside to this, you know, job with code construction here. Um, so pretty much similar to like an entities.foreach or something like that, we actually have to capture these variables before we schedule this job with code here. So even though I've kind of like defined all these private variables up top here and set values to them, Inside the on update, we actually have to capture these all as local variables here, and then we can use them inside the job with code here. Now you'll notice that I'm actually assigning all the results into this native array, and you know, very similar to the C-sharp job system, the only way that we can actually get results from a job with code is by putting things into a native array. Even if we only have, you know, a one single element as the result, you know, maybe we're adding a bunch of numbers together or something like that, and we have like one final number result, we still have to store it in a one element sized native array. So basically what I'm doing here, again, just calculating the trajectory and populating this points array here. And then after that, I'm basically just going to be drawing a debug line from one point to the next. But the only other thing to point out is you'll see that I do have this dependency.complete. Of course, I need that in there to basically confirm that this job has been completed before I actually access this native array. If I didn't have that in there, we'd get all sorts of errors, you know, saying that I'm trying to access a native array that's still open for write access. Now, ideally, you wouldn't do this where you basically just schedule a job and then complete it immediately and then use the results right after it. In an ideal situation, you would want to schedule this job earlier on in the frame and then later on in the frame after this job has some time to, you know, kind of run and do its thing then later on in the frame, then you could actually access the results from this native array. But we'll come back to Unity and you'll see that when I enter play mode, we just have this debug line that's just kind of, uh, you know, changing its trajectory over time. So we can kind of have like a visual representation of what a trajectory would look like given the, uh, you know, initial velocity and the particular angle that it is being launched at. Now, you know, typically if we were doing something like this where we had, you know, maybe a cannon and we wanted to see the trajectory of what it would be, you know, we would use the component data of whatever angle it's at and how much, you know, force is in the cannon. So typically we wouldn't use something like a job with code, but, um, you know, of course, in these videos, I just like to show off these concepts in the easiest way possible. And I felt that, um, you know, just doing this like nice, simple little calculation of this trajectory line uh, was a good way to show off some kind of math operations that are, you know, not necessarily like super intensive, but something that we may want to push off onto a worker thread. So then if we come into the profile here, we can take a look at a couple things. So you see that we have the uh, trajectory calculator system right here, and this is the job handle.complete. So this is actually kind of the uh, section where this little bit of code is running. And so we can come down here and we see on this worker thread, we have the uh, trajectory calculator dot on updates running right now. 
And so, yeah, I'm calculating like 250 points along this trajectory line and it's taking 0.004 milliseconds. So that's neat. So anyways, that's basically about it for today's video. I know this one was on the shorter side, but it's a pretty simple concept and it's something that's, you know, nice and easy to use. Again, I would highly recommend using them just, you know, if you ever have some situation where, um, you know, maybe you're calculating a bunch of different values or you're just kind of maybe doing like a set and forget type thing where you just, you know, need something to happen and you don't necessarily need the results from it right away. The job with code can definitely be a good option again to get a little bit more performance out of your game. Or, you know, if you're just kind of like writing some random code inside of a system base outside of a regular job and you say, you know, hey, I need the results from this right away, but I still want it to take advantage of the burst compiler. Well, you can just use it in a job with code doing a dot run and you will get that performance benefit of using the burst compiler. So with that being said, that's going to wrap up today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed it and you learned something. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and the data or to technology stack of course if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on discord over at tmg.dev discord i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one